wild oats in my peas. Looks like we got some cheat grass, volunteer. I'd say these peas are ready to spray. Let's kill this stuff. We don't want this growing in here. These will choke out these peas. We want the peas to grow, not this stuff. Let's go get the sprayer. Big brute, let's get them. If there's something that I wish I would have done better about this sprayer, Big Brute, is put a better cup holder like that one in him. You guys are correct. We have a 4440 Case IH Patriot with aim command on the farm. This baby has less than 10 hours on it. Never even sprayed a field. Sorry guys, I know, I know. You, you thought we were gonna do something today, but I'm sorry. There is a new cab smell and I am not complaining. Should we start the Patriot up? I like that name Patriot. I feel like I'm a Patriot. Fits. Anyways, let's go to the field. I got some peas I need sprayed. No Brute, no Apache today. It's all Patriot. 4440, 1200 gallon tank, 120 foot steel booms. Should be a great ride. This is my first time ever spraying in a Case IH Patriot. This is something that we've been wanting to get on the farm for a long time. I will disclose right up front right now, guys, this is a demo. We did not buy this sprayer. This is provided to us by our local dealership, Torgerson's, Case IH dealership, as well as our channel partner, Case IH, working together to provide us this amazing machine. 2019, under 10 hours on it. The 10 hours are just roading it around, probably from the factory to here. So we get to use it for a few hours. It's gonna be awesome, I'm excited. So uh, you guys wanna come along for the ride, make spraying fun? Let's make spraying great again, huh? Let's do it. Red, there's some white, and I bet I can find a speck of blue on here. Oh wait, yep, there's a blue nozzle right there. See, red, white, and blue, Patriot. Let's go, start it. Okay, I guess it started. I can't hardly even hear the engine because it's like in the very back. <laughs> it's not, if it were the brood, it'd be shaking right now. I'd know it's running. The, the, definitely though the fans in the cab work, if you can hear those, those kicked on nice and loud. Better turn that down a little bit. Got the Raven monitor, I think this is the Viper Pro 4. Very nice looking monitor. I was actually expecting like a Pro 700 or something in here, but um, I really like this. It's gonna take some getting used to though, so you guys are gonna have to bear along with me. I had a lowdown, they sent someone and they went through with me and kind of gave me a, a lowdown on how to operate this monitor, but you know, I'm a millennial and things just kind of go over my head, right? Or I just think I can figure it out because I'm techie. But no, I'll get I'll get the hang of it. It'll it'll come. So new the little rubber pieces are sticking on the tread. Six twenty seventy thirty eight. These are the biggest tires offered for the Patriot line. They look good on here. I've seen some Patriots some pretty narrow crop row crop tires. I understand why they gotta use those, but they do look pretty wimpy. These look awesome. So when you're driving a crop, do you really want those? Maybe not as much, but technically when you're driving in the country that we're in, where you get stuck. Yeah, the wider one's a little nicer. So I think the ride's probably gonna be a little better too. I'm not complaining. Why would I complain? I mean, honestly, it's <laughs> just nice. This isn't fair. This isn't fair. Why did I have this all these years? I have to worry about the booms. Rate stays right on where it's supposed to be. It's quiet. I. The smoothest riding vehicle I've ever had this field by bar none. I gotta get leg arms in here and dad ASAP. This feels like our 2588 combine. The seat definitely is new, uh, but the console itself feels like 
the same setup, which is actually really kind of nice because I don't mind it and I'm really used to it because we ran those combines for a lot of years. 2188s, 2588s, bunch of those. The front of the steering dash column area looks like it came out of a, a Steiger, which is identical to that. So I'm used to that too. And it's got the foot pegs on it. Love those things. They're pretty amazing. The cab looks like uh, like a Magnum cab. It's a good fit. It, it, it fits well in here. I'm really enjoying this this cab. It's been it's been quite quite fun for the first hour that I've been running this thing. Only an hour in, so yeah, I got a little ways to go. But. There's a cup holder here. Hey, the seat just fell down. Oh, that's pretty convenient. And look at this. Perfect cell phone spot. Yeah, that's. <laughs> No, I'm glad that fell over. I didn't know that was back there. Okay, first tank load has been sprayed out. Sprayed 164.6 acres. I filled the tank at 1,200 gallons, at seven and a half gallons an acre, so I should have been able to do 160 acres. But I did put a little bit more in than 1,200, and I can see the tank holds a little bit more than 1,200, so that came out pretty close. Running uh, red, so zero four nozzles, which lets me do about 17 miles an hour. A little fast, but I'm just doing it because it rides so nice and the weather is perfect out here to be spraying. This thing wings up kind of eerie. I'm not used to it. I'm used to just four parts of a boom. So like two sections on the outside, maybe just the center. This thing's got five seconds, so it's got to curl the ends in and then fold in and it does it automatically. I know they've been doing this for a lot of years, but guys, remember, this is new to me. You want to see this thing wing up? It's fun, watch it. Isn't that pretty snazzy? I was wrong. There's six sections of these booms. The wings up pretty tight though. Honestly, really nice package. The back of this thing doesn't get nearly as dirty as the Brute because the Brute's got those big old floaters in the back. I'm sure after uh, a number of hours here, it'll start getting a little dirty back there. But for right now, first 160 acres in, not bad. Should we get some more product in it? I'm not done yet. <laughs> this is day just started. Let's go. A little bit windy. I guess I'm gonna make sure I've got a good distance on the other crop side, because I don't want to dust out our wheat. This stuff will definitely take care of the wheat. The whole point is to kill grasses. This thing is nice to get in and out of. Really nice. All right, round two, let's go. Like everything, and I think I've said this in the past, it takes time to learn how to run a new machine. Even though all the concepts are still the same, it's just different. It's like getting in a car that has all your uh, controls in a screen instead of knobs. And you're like, okay, which menu does this have it in? It's there. I know it's there. I just got to find it. So I'm learning. I already dusted some of my uh, spring wheat with a little bit. I hit the wrong button. This is your auto guidance button. And that is your master control for your boom for spray on and off. And I hit that button thinking I turned spray off and nope. It was that one and I made a corner right on the edge of one of our fields. So there won't be any wheat growing there for well, this year, I guess, in the grand scheme of things, I knew that was gonna happen. But it wasn't a lot, though. It wasn't like I sprayed a whole pass. It was just a quarter. The only downside is I'm burning through a product pretty fast. <laughs> it's like, that's that 1,200 gallon tank, that's 700 and a half gallon work. I mean, in the Brute, I was getting that 1,600 gallons. At five gallon work, I was getting like 330 acres a load or 240 or 60 acres a load. So it's a little bit more fill-ups, but and they do make a 1600 gallon version of this sprayer and I think, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they're making a 2000 gallon version of this sprayer as well. So it's not like they don't have the capacity, it's just I don't have it. That's okay. This thing is pretty slick. So right now I'm going about 17 miles an hour and I have this little knob right here and I can fine tune my speed off this knob. So if I turn it back, I can slow myself down and if I turn it up, I can speed myself up. So as you can see, so then I just take my control stick here and I just push it all the way forward and I fine tune with my fingers here, which works pretty good. And honestly, not bad. The monitor, love it, really nice. Still learning what a lot of this stuff is, but I have a pretty good idea on what I need to at least run this thing. It feels weird being above this front axle. None of the sprayers I've ever driven have had the axle literally behind me. I'm sitting in front of it right now. So I'm just kind of hanging off the front of the sprayer, which, Ride-wise, honestly, is pretty nice. Uh, this thing 
This thing rides freakishly smooth and nice. It's, it's a little deceiving at how fast you're going 17, 18 miles an hour and going through a ditch and seeing that boom just kind of lightly bounce up and down, not just flop all over the place like our other sprayers do, which I try not to do it, but I am testing this thing because I want to see how does it perform in a normal operation. Parts are on early in the morning, got down, got it. We're good. My pickup needs a, needs a balance in the wheels. It's a little bit of vibrating, but <laughs> that's okay. It doesn't leave the farm very often, so I usually don't get it up above 60 miles an hour on the farm. And you're on gravel, so you really don't feel the vibration anyways. But I've got a dilemma. I'm sitting here driving, and my golf clubs are sitting right there, taunting me. The golf course is beautiful right now. In fact, I went the other day, and it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. The weather right now is perfect for spraying and golfing. You wanna go for a ride? I think he does. I'll, I'll, I'll go spray. I'm okay with it, let's go spray. If you're not familiar with Patriot sprayers, something that's been in their arsenal for a while now, a pretty amazing uh, feature is called uh, Aim Command. This particular unit has what's called Aim Command Flux. It's pretty neat. Not only does every one of these nozzle bodies have a solenoid, but what it can do is it can turn each one of these on, on and off as needed so you don't overspray. That's the problem with our sprayers. Our sprayer has four sections. So literally 100 feet split it up four ways, so it's at 25 feet a piece. So if I've got a little gap, a corner piece, like a little spot on the ground like this that I missed when I sprayed when I turned, I gotta go over that. It has to turn on 25 feet of boom and spray to catch that skip. Well, that means that you just sprayed of a five foot section, you sprayed 20 feet on top of ground that you've already sprayed. So you just double applicated your crop or whatever you're spraying. Two things, that's hard because your plants can only metabolize so much chemical. That's why there's certain rates to apply in. Like these peas, if I put down too much of what I'm broadcasting to kill the grass, it'll hurt the peas. So you have to stay on the limit. Well, if you double advocate, you just doubled the dosage that those peas have to try to metabolize. That's bad. Other thing is cost. You're wasting chemical, you're wasting money. You're throwing money to the ground that you don't need to do. So if you figure out five to 10% savings throughout a lifetime of a sprayer, that could be tens of thousands of dollars worth of chemical that you've lost. That's where this system comes into play. Now it is more expensive, so you have to figure that out. But bottom line is this aim command flux system it's amazing. Now, here's the other thing to it. This is a pull system. So, think about this, okay? I'm gonna try to do this fast. You got a long plane, okay? My arm's the boom, and I start turning, okay? The outside of my fingertips here start turning quicker than the inside of my shoulder, okay? So this area, if you're spraying the same rate across the entire boom, if this is the inside corner that's turning and it's pivoting around this whole point, what'll happen is it'll just dose the ground here with a ton of chemical and the other side won't get much at all because it's basing the rate that it should apply off the speed of the sprayer, which is in the middle over there. So if you're going 10 miles an hour over there, but this boom's pivoting in one spot, it's gonna spray 10 miles an hour worth of spray in one little area right here while the outside is just spinning around. This aim command flux, it can actually pulsate, so go or or really fast, it'll actually vary the rate of flow through these nozzle bodies. So if this area is just sitting in one spot and I'm just turning it in a circle and pivoting this on one spot, which you guys are about to see in a minute because I'm gonna spray on a power pole, it will actually go and it won't over applicate the ground. And then on the other end, it's gonna go and it's gonna spray a ton of chemical down because it's gonna be swinging way faster. It's probably 30, 40 miles an hour if I'm really whipping. That tip out there is probably going and it has to try to make up for that. Those two things alone are huge. And they're something we've never had on this farm. I can already tell you right now, just from seeing as I spray, it is amazing. I know it's more complex. I know there's more issues with potentially reliability down the road or whatnot, but overall it's it's awesome. And I, I want it really bad. Let's go spray, watch what happens. Let's see if we can catch it. See if you can see, my pocket won't stop talking to me. You guys have that problem? I do. Anyways. So watch what happens. When I go around this pole, you're gonna see go, you're gonna see the rate slow down and speed up. Really neat feature, really cool. It obviously is uh, what you get when you got a premium sprayer like this. Another thing I noticed, I think I've like a couple times I've been like, why is it wung forward? It's like 
kind of facing inward. It needs to be out and straight. Well, I noticed when you slow down to stop, it actually lets the cylinders collapse a little bit to relieve the tension on this boom. Because there's a lot of binding that takes place up here. If the whole boom tries to stay rigid when you stop, it's going to want to pull that boom forward. It lets it do it. All right, I got to talk to my phone and find out what's going on. Let's watch this thing spray. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? And then you saw it shut off. That shut off is when it got to the spot where I had already sprayed, so it wasn't gonna applicate anymore. And then when I got going straight again and got on the, the, the AB line, out away from the power pole, all of a sudden you start going and it turned on. That's because I was at operating speed and it was able to go full flow. That's really neat. Now, there's a lot of solenoids. There's always a potential for one of those solenoids to quit working, so. I'm told to always keep a couple extra on hand. I'm also told they can be a little expensive, but I think that technology is getting better and better. It, companies have to do this. They have to do this because these are things that make farming in the 21st century feasible. This job that I do, the value that we make off our crops changes every year and it usually is going downward or not going up at all. But the cost of farming the demands of farming, the acres that we're farming are going up, 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 up. So to try to meet that, we have to come out with new innovations like this. So I commend Case IH, I commend all the different companies out there who have put these systems together to make it work. It's, it's, uh, it's really good. So I gotta talk to dad about keeping this thing. I'm sure he'd be okay with that. Maybe he can take it out of my wages. That might work. Look at this boom over here. I'm not touching anything. It is lifting itself up on its own. So I went through a dip right there. If that were our other sprayers, our Apache has some ability to do that, but the, the node quit on it, so we don't have that enabled at the moment. Big Root does not have any of that. That would have just dug that boom in the ground. So I imagine I've sit there and raise lower the boom since I'm spraying the field. It's stressful, it's demanding. That there is quick. It lifts that boom fast. I've barely, very rarely seen it even touch the ground. There is a guide wheel that does touch once in a while. But it's pretty amazing. I'm, 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 that's awesome. Another thing I want to show you guys is this monitor. See that skip right here? I'm about to spray over that. It's going to turn each individual nozzle on as needed to spray over that. No more, no less. Boom, 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 boom. There. Just caught that whole swath. Each one turned on as needed. Each one turned off as needed. Absolute most efficient amount of product was used without over applicating and not saturating the ground with unnecessary amounts of chemical or wasting dollars. Got most of these sprayed around the farmyard, so that is where I want to be. Now where we're headed is the farthest stuff on the farm, so I got to drive about 10 miles. And on top of that, I'm at about just under half tank of fuel. I think I have about 800 acres sprayed on a half tank, so that's pretty good. That's not bad. But I don't know how that tip fuel gauge compares to how much time I have left on the sprayer. So let's top off the fuel tanks, at least uh, know that I've got enough fuel. This field that I'm on right now, is kind of a big rectangle, and it's not a typical north-south rectangle, it's an east-west rectangle. But we still plant it north-south with our rows. Well, for the convenience of spraying, it's nicer to just spray east-west because there's less turning around on the headland. Your headlands are a lot smaller. I'm gonna try and put the sprayer to test because the thing is with the other sprayers that we have, the comfort level of going across all of your seated ground on a perpendicular is not very good because it starts to bounce the sprayer. You can, you can get those tire tracks from the tractor from planting. It's just not comfortable at all. That boom, it's bouncing all over. This thing, on the other hand, rides a lot nicer. This full independent suspension, and this cab and the way the boom is mounted to the sprayer is just a totally different situation than other ones. So I'm gonna give it a shot. I'm gonna spray east-west. Let's see how smooth this ride is. And I'm gonna be honest here. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna make up things. If it's if it is what it is, I'll tell you. You know. We'll see what happens.
not bad. I can tell a little more. I mean, there's definitely, I can feel the tire tracks, the big bud, but it's like so little. This is about the roughness of a smooth ride in Big Brood. I'm not kidding either. And that boom is not bouncing like this, like it would at Big Brood. So far, pretty good. Uh, this is a 300 acre piece, so I'll know more by the end, but uh, my initial thoughts are, I can spray this piece east-west when it's uh, planted north-south, which is a lot nicer because I don't have to turn around as much, so. I can relax. Ah. All right, just wrap that field up and yeah, it was a, it was a nice ride. Definitely a, definitely a nice ride. So yeah, the ride definitely checks the box. Good. I'm gonna pull a hill. So we're gonna test the hydraulics out on this thing. See if the hydrostatic drive's got a lot of torque to it or not. We got a thousand gallons in the tank and the hill I'm gonna pull is one of the steeper ones on our farm. I'm not spraying, I'm just driving, but I don't know if there's a special way to go about this, but I bet it's gonna squeal a little bit as I try to go up it. I'm just not gonna go full on out and just uh, throw all the oil to it as possible because, well, that just generates heat and makes things uh, not good. So we'll just ease our way up it, but yeah, I'm curious to see how this thing pulls us hill. Well, we're slowing down. Honestly, it wasn't too bad. I'm actually really impressed. Uh, I started about 22 miles an hour when I hit it and uh, it dropped down to about 13 and a half and then it picked right back up. There was a moment there I could tell when it sensed it needed more power. Something changed in the hydraulics and I don't know what it was, but it, it opened up something and all of a sudden it had more power going up the hill. Uh, you know, big brute driving that hill. I can go at it 30, 40 miles an hour, which normally I'm not going that fast on a hill. And it drops down a couple gears and it pulls it and that's, you know, it can push 400 horsepower. This thing's at 300 and something. So that's not bad. I was thoroughly impressed with how well it pulled that hill. And there's a bunch of mule deer crossing the road in front of me. That's cool. I'll tell you what, farming right now is, it's a lot of fun. Uh, there's a lot of green grass. That's good to see. But the wildlife, a lot of babies. I've seen a lot of baby antelope. We've seen some baby deer. It's uh, it's fun. A lot of cool things happening. And I'm in a really nice break. The seat, by the way, I love this seat. I wish I had this as an office chair. I really wish I had this as an office chair. I think that notice if I took it out and painted my office chair red, put it in here. You could always at least try it and see what happens. That's it. 1,314 acres sprayed with uh, pretty high efficiency. No, it's good, I'm running this thing back and uh, I'm gonna park it and I'm gonna go uh, take off for a little while, but that's good, peas are done. Next up, chickpeas. And then after that, wheat. So we got a lot of spraying a lot ahead of us in this thing, so just getting it warmed up. Just slowly working those hours in. It's gonna be good, pal. Well, I'm gonna enjoy this drive home, let's go. I just wanted to say a couple quick words about this thing. Really enjoying my time with this 4440. The aim command flex, amazing. The auto boom, <clears throat> amazing. This boom, the way it handles in the fields, it doesn't rattle, it doesn't bang, it just floats. The ride is awesome. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it's fast. It's a pretty sweet setup, so there's gonna be a lot more of this thing coming. We just finished the peas, we got wheat, we got chickpeas, we got fungicides we gotta put on, and we're gonna utilize this as much as we possibly can. I'm milking every, every minute I have with this thing, I'm milking it, so thank you Case International. And thank you, Torgerson's. This is actually Torgerson's Case IH dealership, and this is their sprayer, actually, so <laughs> I have their toy. But thank you guys for giving us this opportunity, and uh, I'm happy to share it with all of you, because uh, this is a new experience for me, so I hope it's, uh, if it's not a new experience for you and you have one of those, I'm jealous. But anyways, thanks for watching. So have a great one. There's gonna be more coming. Stay tuned. Later. God bless.